First thing, multiplication by subtraction, taking things away. The power of focus is a must. Getting good at five things uh, will at best get you average in a couple, but no respect from anybody because you're not a master. Okay, so what can you take away from your schedule that's not based on results? What meetings can you stop running? Instead of making a to-do list, I want you to make a stop doing list. This is important to chip away at all the noise and start tracking everything. What can you chip away at all the noise with so you're locked and loaded and focused on what matters? You try to catch two rabbits, you're catching zero. So once I started taking things away and really doing things that I knew proved to get results, I talked about this on the call with some of you guys about becoming unstoppable last week um, or earlier this week. Design over willpower. Okay, you got to lock in military routines. Now, let me give you an example of design over willpower. How you design your schedule is more important than what's on it. And how you design your life and your routines is more important than willpower and motivation. So for example, I don't eat junk food anymore. There's just no point. Having a kid changes my life because I'm, I'm, I'm working really hard on delayed gratification and fast forwarding to when I'm 40, 50, 60, 70. And all my dumb decisions, my coward decisions in the moment, oh, should I eat this cheeseburger? Should I eat this milkshake? Or should I uh, get something healthy? All those bad decisions I made will catch up with me later. And who suffers? My kids, not me, my kids right? So I haven't been doing junk food and sh like, like heavy sugars. So instead of me and my wife uh, having options in the house for bad food, there's no options. We designed it where there's no bad food. Now, eight or nine at night, do we have cravings? We're human beings. Of course we do all the time, but we physically cannot give into that craving because we don't have it. So we'll do fruit or apple or something instead. She'll make like this chia, chia seed shake she does and we'll do like a banana smoothie or something. And it quenches my, my, uh, my craving. Design is more important than willpower. Yes, you wanna place your toughest tasks where you have the most willpower. So you have to figure out as an entrepreneur, what are the most important result focused tasks in your business? And we'll go through the 80-20 rule. And then when do you have the most willpower? place those tasks there. Okay. But more important than that, design your schedule for max productivity to where you don't have to waste your willpower. You only have a certain amount of willpower of the day. My wife and a lot of people know in the mornings, I don't make decisions except the big ones for my business. And I try to make the decisions for the morning, the night before. But if you ask, if I'm making a ton of little dumb decisions in the morning or people ask me for, for stuff that I don't necessarily care about, they can make the decision. I'm wasting my willpower to make decisions, right? So you don't want to make too many decisions that are irrelevant uh, before you do real business that actually matters. Okay, very important. So design over willpower. The next thing. I already said this a little bit, but just start teaching people how to communicate with you, okay? And start limiting your availability. Millionaires understand that their time and energy is a privilege. Even if you're not at the six-figure mark yet, think and act like the next level, okay? Uh, you have to utilize this for, for the productivity. And, and for me, I got rid of everything that was toxic that kind of got me off my game or affected my mental state of mind. When you're in sales, when I ran a direct sales team, um, it's important not to let other people affect your mental state of mind, people letting you down. Because the, the higher you get up in leadership, the more people let you down. So when you're, when you're a leader and you're running a sales team, you're let down every day because you place such high standards on people and they're constantly letting you down. Um, and if that affects your mental state of mind, it's going to affect your ability to make the right decisions and to help them lead themselves, right? So you got to pick things right now that you need to get rid of in your life that are toxic. So I don't connect with no ambition entrepreneurs. This is chipping away at the noise. I don't connect with people with no ambition. And that's not like, oh, you're acting too cool. No, I'm not. I have a family. I want to work with people that want to better themselves. Why would I invest in someone that doesn't want to invest in themselves? Why would I bet on somebody and give my time if they don't value or respect their time? Right? Think about that.
That's, I just don't talk to people. Now, I'm not going to, if I talk to them, be rude. I'm saying in general, I protect my time and there's a filter system on all my social media, all my emails, everything that comes in. I don't talk to people unless they show me they're serious through action, not words. Right? Second is, there's just no more time for wasted conversation or small talk. Life is too short. Life is too short, right? And, and some of you guys don't have kids, but when you have kids, you have a wife and, and you have a, such a big vision, there's just no more time for wasted conversation. <laughs> it's just like, life's too short. And then for me, it's just calls with no impact, no reach, no revenue, no impact, okay? So just, just teach people how you wanna communicate and, and, and you control your agenda, not other people. So the next thing is 80-20 rule, okay? You, you know this, but are you doing it? 20% of all your activities account for 80% of your income. Figure out what those are, and that's the first step towards growth. Really think about what your top three actions or activities are. They create income for you. You have to constantly ask yourself if what you're doing is profitable and focus on doing that versus doing what you feel. Because a lot of times when I audit businesses, when I walk through businesses and I look at, I look at their 50, 60 hours they're working, probably 45 of the 50 or 60 hours that are working are not focused on results. They're just focused on maintaining the business and maintaining the business should be systemized, delegated and put into fixed actions. So you do it once and it, it repeats itself, right? So it's important to understand what activities yield the highest results. Don't forget that impact drives income and you're always paid for the value that you're bringing to the marketplace. So becoming more valuable should be in your schedule at all times. Okay, becoming more valuable, sharpening your craft. I lose sleep sometimes thinking about how many people don't invest in themselves and would rather invest in Netflix or material items or sporting events, which is fine, but they don't ever invest in themselves. They're escaping reality so much that the reality is chipping away. And as you escape your reality, regret increases. And as you know, regret stings. So for me, I'm trying to only do things I enjoy and escape reality when I feel like I'm already bettered my reality and I deserve it, right? But that's why it's so important to, to really have that uh, focus on network. So what are your top three profit producing activities that have been proven to create results? So sales calls, talking to your salespeople, writing and creating content, uh, reaching out to companies, developing partnerships, doing appointments, uh, doing your door-to-door, -door, um, sending out emails to your list, creating persuasive copy, working on delivering more uh, higher value from stage, perfecting your marketing message, creating a referral system. I don't know what it is. Right? I remember when I was in direct sales, uh, whoever sold the most product for the week, I always made a top 10 list of who sold the most products. And I met with every single one of them before the week started to make sure they kept the momentum up. They had the biggest pull on results for the business. So I would meet with them. I would figure out their hot buttons, what's most important to them. And I would make sure they knew that I cared about their success and what's in it for them. Right? The key is teaching people how to, you don't have to give everyone your time, but you want to teach people how to deserve your time. Right? You don't need to give everyone your time, but teach people how to deserve your time. Give your time to people who deserve it not just people who need it. Okay, here's another question. Track your business for the last 60 days. What 20% of marketing efforts have yielded 80% of your results for your current business? You wanna even go as far as what 20% of people and activities are producing 80% of your positive emotions and fulfillment. Let me say that again, okay? Being a game changer is not just getting results. It's living a world-class life. It's moving with purpose. It's not letting people affect your state of mind. It's really becoming the best at what you do and enjoying it. So what 20% of people and activities are producing 80% of your positive emotions and fulfillment? Now, here's the crazy part. Same thing happens for the negative. What 20% of people and activities are producing 80% of your negative emotions and frustrations? A lot of your week can be flexible, but 20% that produces the 80% of the results needs to be locked in every week. What happens if you only could work 10 hours per week on your business? This is an extremely productive question. There's a gun to your head. You have to, so here's a question. You have to produce the same results you're producing now, but you can only work 10 hours a week. There's a gun to your head. 
Like you cannot work more than 10 hours and you have to produce the same results. That's a question that changed my life. What would you do? Think about it, spend some time, ponder that. You see the trick to productivity is deciding what you're gonna work on at some point other than in the moment and then practicing that high value work over and over until it's natural, habitual and automatic. So making decisions in the moment is a little more challenging, right? That's why you wanna predetermine your outcome and really the more you think things through, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. Now entrepreneurs like to connect and like to take action and go, 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 go. So if you can actually add in some strategic thinking time to sit back and reflect, where did I waste time? Where was I in my zone? When was I not in my zone? Where was I too easily influenced? Where did fear creep in? Where did insecurity creep in? Why? Where did a bad mindset, where did a limitation come in that caused me to take a different action from my past? How can I replace that limitation with a actual fact and a positive limitation that I can continue repeating to myself that actually serves my future? Think about that. When there's an excuse or I tell myself an excuse that comes from my small town background, where, as I've said before, I knew nobody successful. People were working nine to fives. If they made 65K in a year, they would be ecstatic, right? And that's where I came from. So when I have an excuse, I always hold it up to the light and I say, okay, has there been anyone else in the world that has had the same past as me or similar, but actually crushed it? And if the answer is yes, your excuse is invalid, right? So measure your, and, and these days there's no more excuses. When it comes to productivity, I mean, there, there's so many amazing things happening. Impossible things are happening every day. 15-year-olds are making millions. 10-year-olds are making millions. 75-year-olds are starting their own business and crushing it. There's really no excuses left except the story you're telling yourself that usually comes from your past, how you grew up, and who you're around, right? I talked about routines earlier. I didn't really dive in. You need to figure out the most important routines based on your goals and what business you're in. Okay, rituals and routines are the things that are going to keep you growing consistently that don't involve feelings because they're already locked in your schedule. So whether you feel like it or not, you're still doing it. So I have mindset rituals and routines. I have value to the marketplace ritual routines. So I make sure every week I'm creating value. I'm creating new videos. I'm doing podcasts. The podcasts are getting out. I'm pushing the podcast. I have the YouTube video go out every week. We have a couple emails go out to our list. Uh, I have a making sure my clientele and you guys are taken care of like to the umph degree, like the values there, you have everything you need to succeed, right? I have health rituals. I have relationship rituals where I'm connecting with my inner circle and my top people. Uh, me and Kayla have date night. I have time. I take my son to the park five times a week. I'm with him in the mornings. I'm with him at night. Sometimes I come home and relax with him for an hour, but I, I also have a ritual to be present. Okay. So absolutely 100% in the zone present. Wherever you are, be there. I used to be in the shower thinking about work. Then I'm at work thinking about this. I used to be on vacation thinking about working. Then I used to be working thinking about vacation. It's the worst way to live on the planet. Wherever you are, be there. Now, if you're on this call focused and you're trying to do other stuff and tell your team you're a multitasker and they always cut their productivity in half by multitasking, you might've been taught to multitask. If you have three tasks, doing them at the same time, makes no sense when you can just do them back to back to back in the same time, but just be way more effective with each, right? So it's important to have routines for what's most important. And it's important to also simplify as a game changer and not get so complex with things. So millionaires have this canny, uncanny ability to simplify everything to very clear terms. So for example, morning routine. I still can't believe there's, there's whole books on morning routines. It's like, what? You don't need a whole book. It's, it's super, super simple. There's only two purposes to a morning routine. One is to get yourself in the right state of mind, okay, to strengthen your mental toughness and to just make sure that you're in the right state of mind to make good decisions. And two is to schedule your day and make sure that you know what you're doing. Toughest task first. However, you got to do it to get there, working out, visualization, um, meditation, journaling, reading, whatever it is, simplify things to their core values and it'll be a lot easier for you. Hey, what's up? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this video and this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, put the notifications on, and I assure you, you'll love this content in these videos.